Hey everybody, what's going on? This is Sam with Historic Travels. And as always, before we get started today, I'd just like to take a quick moment to welcome all my new subscribers and to thank everybody who's been leaving me comments and messages down below. Thank you guys. Some of these messages and video ideas are absolutely incredible. And I do try my best to read all of them, even though I don't respond to everything. I am trying to read as many of them as I can. So everybody, please keep up the good work. All right, well, hey, without any further ado, let's get into today's topic. Everyone knows the vital role that the lifeboats played the night the Titanic sank. However, there is a story of two lifeboats that isn't highly known, and that is what we're going to be covering in this video. For today's video, we're going to be talking about the last two lifeboats to leave the Titanic as she was sinking, and we're going to discuss how they almost didn't make it. In this video, we're going to be talking about the incredible story of Titanic's lifeboats Collapsible A and Collapsible B. You see, the reason why Collapsible Lifeboats A and B were the last lifeboats to leave Titanic was because of where they were actually placed on the ship. You see, while all of, well, most of Titanic's lifeboats were stored on the side of the ship like you see in this model, they were stored right along the boat deck, right beside the railing so they would be easy to launch. Collapsibles A and B were not like that. Collapsible A and B, and you can kind of see it on this model, they were stored right here by the first funnel. So here on the starboard side is collapsible A, on the port side is collapsible B. So they're actually stored on the roof of the officer's quarters, basically right behind the bridge, sitting right beside the first funnel. And because they were in this difficult position, it created great difficulty with the ship's officers to try to prep and launch these lifeboats. And you see, because the lifeboats were placed in this very difficult position, the officers didn't even mess with them until all the other lifeboats were gone. And by then, the Titanic only had roughly 10 minutes or so left. Collapsible A was pushed down from the roof of the officers' quarters down to the regular boat deck at around 2.09 a.m. And remember, Titanic sank at 2.20, so they really don't have much time left. And then once they got that boat down, they were working on Collapsible B, the other lifeboat on the roof of the officers' quarters. Water was just now beginning to come up on the main boat deck. So it was really a race against the clock to try to get these two lifeboats prepped and launched before the Titanic sank. Now when they were trying to get lifeboat collapsible B off of the roof of the officer's quarters and try to get it prepped to launch, you have to remember the Titanic was sinking very rapidly at this point and had a very strong list of port, which means the side that this lifeboat was on, it was kind of sloped downhill. So when they pushed this lifeboat off of the roof, it ended up flipping upside down right before it landed on the boat deck. And this also had serious consequences for one of Titanic's wireless operators, Harold Bride. Titanic's wireless operator Harold Broad emerged from his cabin right around the time they were trying to get Collapsible B off of the roof of the officer's quarters. And he was basically in the wrong place at the wrong time. And because of where he was at this time, something pretty bad happened to him. When they pushed Collapsible B off of the roof of the officer's quarters, it fell upside down on top of wireless operator Harold Broad, pinning him underneath the lifeboat. So that meant he is stuck, pinned by this massive lifeboat, while the Titanic is rapidly sinking underneath him. Harold Broad ended up doing what anybody would do in those circumstances, and as soon as that lifeboat landed on top of him, he began to yell out for help. But you have to understand, at that point, the Titanic was rapidly dropping and water was coming up on the boat deck like crazy, and there were people yelling and screaming and running every which way. There's no way they could have heard him underneath that lifeboat. So what he ended up doing was just waiting underneath this boat until the Titanic literally sank out from underneath him, and the lifeboat began to float up, up, float up off of him on its own. Then he just held his breath and swam out from underneath the lifeboat and came up on top of it. That's how he survived, and Harold Bribe would end up surviving the evening. Once Collapsible B began to float away from the Titanic, there was nothing anybody could do about trying to flip the lifeboat over. So what the men ended up doing that were positioned close to the lifeboat, they ended up just climbing on top of the lifeboat while it was flipped upside down, and they all attempted to balance it and keep it stable so they could use it as a means to escape the sinking Titanic. Now, if you thought that was bad, Collapsible B ending up being flipped upside down and all this stuff happening around that lifeboat, well... Collapsible A on the other side of the Titanic had its own nightmare scenario going on with it as the Titanic was rapidly sinking around it. You see, with lifeboat Collapsible A, the officers tried to launch this lifeboat the correct means by tying it to the ship and lowering it down over the side. However, the Titanic began to sink way too fast, and because this lifeboat was still tied to the ship, the Titanic actually began to drag the lifeboat down with it, which meant that the officers had to now cut and free this lifeboat or they ran the risk of it actually being dragged down with the Titanic after it sank. Now the officers did manage to cut the ropes and free Collapsible A right before the Titanic did drag it all the way down with it. But you see, the lifeboat had actually been dragged down so low that it was just about ready to start flooding. So when they cut these ropes, 
and Collapsible A was suddenly 100% buoyant, it shot straight up out of the water so fast. And Collapsible A was also fully loaded with people at this point. So that meant when it shot up like that, it ended up dumping most of the people in Collapsible A into the freezing ocean and they had to scramble to try to get back into this boat. So I mean, Collapsible A was a, it was, it was just as bad as Collapsible B in my opinion. But now at this point, both collapsible A and B are slowly starting to float away from the Titanic. And you're probably thinking, okay, so their troubles are over. They're just trying to get people on board and try to get away from the ship as best they can. Well, collapsible B has another situation that it's about ready to deal with. And it is a miracle that collapsible B was not destroyed when this incident happened. I want you to imagine you are one of the men on the overturned lifeboat right beside Titanic's massive first funnel. And as you're slowly starting to push your lifeboat away from the sinking ship and you see the funnel towering above you, you begin to hear a very strange sound coming from Titanic's first funnel. When Titanic's first funnel fell, it missed collapsible B by inches. I mean, I can't even describe how close that lifeboat came to being crushed by Titanic's first funnel. It was that close. Second officer Charles Lightoller actually made it to collapsible B and was trying to hang on to the upside down lifeboat. And he said later at the inquiry that it was nothing short of a miracle they didn't get crushed by the funnel. Now that funnel falling ended up did help. It ended up helping collapsible A and B to a certain extent. You see, the wave generated by the first funnel impact in the ocean actually helped push collapsible A and B further away from the sinking Titanic, which was a good thing. Because most, for the biggest reason was that not long after the first funnel fell, the housing, that act, the structure that held the grand staircase dome, it actually began to submerge. So that meant that if collapsible A and B had not been pushed away by that first funnel, then there's a chance they could have gotten sucked into the whirlpool that affected the Grand Staircase Dome when the water reached it and the dome imploded. It really was nothing short of a miracle that the people in the lifeboats were able to clear the Titanic and get away from the Grand Staircase Dome before it imploded. Because if the dome had imploded and the lifeboats were close to it, there's a very, very good chance that those two lifeboats would have been destroyed by the whirlpool effect generated by the Grand Staircase Dome when it imploded. Now at this point, both lifeboats had successfully cleared the Titanic and they were out of range of being destroyed by the ship as she slowly went down. Now, when it comes to Collapsible A, Collapsible A, where it almost got, you know, where it almost got swamped and dragged down with the Titanic, it had been dangerously swamped with water. The lifeboat was roughly about half full of water and the passengers on board that boat didn't really have a means of getting the water out of that lifeboat. So that meant even though they were in a lifeboat, they were still stuck dealing with this freezing cold water. Around 20 people made it to Collapsible A and were actually inside that lifeboat. However, only 13 of the 20 people in that boat would end up surviving the night. Now, the story was a little bit different for Collapsible B. Under command of 2nd Officer Charles Lightoller, the men on the overturned Collapsible B lifeboat were able to keep the boat more or less stable and balanced while they were waiting for rescue. And this is also the lifeboat where our favorite baker, Charles Yalkin, actually ended up climbing aboard the boat and surviving. So because of this, and because of 2nd Officer Charles Lightoller, they ended up having a much easier time on the overturned lifeboat than the people did in Collapsible A that was half swamped with water. Now under 2nd Officer Charles Lightoller's leadership, about 25 to 30 people that were on top of Collapsible B, they actually ended up able to survive the evening. So that means that more people survived on top of the upside down lifeboat than survived on the right side up lifeboat that was half swamped with water. So that goes to show you that the key to surviving that night was to get out of the water. Even though the people in Collapsible A were in a lifeboat where it was still half submerged with water, it was brutal to the people in that lifeboat. Now, the people on both Collapsible A and B, they were in those boats for several hours. And then eventually they were picked up by other lifeboats that came back to help and try to rescue Titanic survivors. So they were able, they didn't have to stay in those situations throughout the entire evening, but for those few hours that they were in those lifeboats, it was pretty brutal. 
And there were three bodies that were placed into lifeboat Classable A and they were left there after they were picked up by other lifeboats. And Classable A was left adrift in the ocean. And several weeks after the Titanic went down, another ship that was traveling through Titanic's debris field actually ended up finding Classable A and did retrieve those bodies. But yeah, so that is the incredible story of Collapsible A and B of the Titanic. And quite, and you know, honestly, it is a miracle that anybody on those two lifeboats, or even those lifeboats in general, survived the sinking of the Titanic. Anyway, guys, that's it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed it and you learned something cool and interesting about the Titanic y'all didn't know before. Now, before we go, as always, smash that like button, and if you're new here, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks, guys. It really, really means a lot. And I'm actually going to do one more thing in this video before I say goodbye to everybody. I am going to show a clip from another video that I'm working on. It's going to be a very short clip, about 10 seconds or so. And I want to see if anybody in the comments or if anybody is watching this video live, I want you to see if you can guess what the topic of one of my upcoming videos is going to be. So just leave it in the comments section or if you're watching it live, leave it in the chat bar below. I'm very curious if anybody can guess what ship I'm going to be working on in the very, very near future. All right, everybody. Well, hey, I hope you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for the, next, for, stay tuned for the clip and I will see you all in the next one.